One of the things that's become very important and very prominent is the genetics of ovarian cancer. There's a lot of talk out there and I think it's important that you be aware of the disease and what genes predispose to the development of ovarian cancer. We're going to give you an overview of BRCA1 and BRCA2, the two most common genes associated with predisposition to ovarian and breast cancer. And in that discussion, we'll talk about genetic counseling, how to be tested, and how we begin to interpret those results. And we talk about what to do if it turns out that you have one of these mutations. It turns out that somewhere between 10 and maybe as high as 20% of all of ovarian, fallopian tube, and peritoneal cancer are inherited. It has to do with what we call, and this is a big term, germline mutations. But what it is, is something that you inherit from your mother or your father that you're born with, and it predisposes to certain types of conditions, one of which may be ovarian and breast cancer. The two genes that we know have the highest rate of predisposition to those cancers are called BRCA1 and BRCA2. These genes come through your father or your mother, you inherit them, and they're in every cell of your body. And in the breast or the ovaries, they can lead to the development of malignancy, of cancer. The average age of ovarian cancer, so-called sporadic cancer, those that are not associated with a mutation, occur around the age of 60 or 62. Whereas those associated with these mutations in BRCA1 and 2 occur in the early 50s or even in the 40s in some cases. That's important to be aware of because if you start thinking about your family and what their family history is, if you had an aunt that had breast cancer at age 42, or your mom had ovarian cancer when she was 48 or 52, that would be the, the tip off, so to speak, that there may be something in your family's pedigree, as we say, that might predispose you to carrying one of these mutations. So when she comes in, often she will first have spoken with one of our genetic counselors on the telephone who will actually take a full family history, three generations of the family, what countries they came from, how long they lived, and whether they had cancers and at various ages. And that pedigree, as we call it, will allow us to make an estimate of risk in this family and help us to understand, do we think it would be useful to test this woman for a particular gene mutation, such as BRCA1 or another. And we often will do that before the appointment just so we can decide, is it worth her while even to come in? And if so, we then can bring her in already prepared to talk about risks for her personal case and her family. And so when she comes in, we will finish the family history if we didn't get it all on the phone. And we then will really give a bit of a lesson in genetics, often actually using pictures on an iPad or even a flip book to remind women, if they haven't had it since high school, about the basic principles of genetics and what is a gene and how those genes can go wrong, really, to cause a cancer and the steps in that. We also will talk about when a gene is mutated, what is the exact risk of breast or ovarian cancer, and how does that compare to the average woman's risk. And after we've gone through all those genetic issues, we then will move on to talk about recommendations. So for example, if the genetic test is positive, what would we do next? Sometimes patients say, why would you talk about that before the testing? And we do it because we want people to know what they might be getting themselves into. That if the test is positive, we would be talking about screening, preventive surgery, so that people can make an informed decision. At that point, if people wish, we would then proceed with a blood draw and send off the test. In about two or three weeks, we get the results. And we actually call everyone by telephone because we want them to have the results as soon as possible so they aren't waiting and worrying at home. Generally, if the results show a mutation, we ask people to come back in so we can walk them through exactly what this means for them and their family and make plans in terms of screening and prevention and referrals often to our colleagues in the Women's Cancer Center for things that they might need to reduce their risk. 
if one can identify that you're carrying one of those mutations, you can have prophylactic or preventative types of operations to minimize the risk that you're going to develop these cancers. That is, you could have the ovaries or fallopian tubes or both removed, and in some cases, more careful monitoring of the breasts or even prophylactic mastectomy, as we say, removal of breast tissue. The important thing is that if you have concerns or suspicion about your family history that might predispose you or you're worried or you've heard about this and you want to be tested, then you need to discuss this with your doctor, uh, with your multidisciplinary care coordinator so that we can be sure that you undergo appropriate testing.